սիրելի հայելակրցներ, ողջունում են ձեզ բոլորին։ As children of Armenia, no matter where we're born, no matter where we live, our mother Armenia, no matter the circumstances, she's always loved us, comforted us, and nurtured us in the diaspora, wherever we've been on this globe. If you remember, after the biblical flood, after the end of the world, Noah and his descendants rebuilt the life of humanity in Armenia. Humanity regenerated through our homeland. Indeed, creating life, giving birth to life, is a trait of our people that has been proven throughout the times. Today, it is our turn to show our love, commitment, and dedication to our mother, our motherland, Armenia and Artsakh, the heroic people of Artsakh. Give generously from your heart to help our mother, our motherland, to our heroic people of Artsakh to rebuild, to renew, to recreate, as our ancestors have done always before. And now I'd like to invite our primate, Bishop Hobaikin, please, to join us for a prayer. Cyril Aylinakisner, Aishem, Mink Bolores, Mia Simpiti Karcha Aotkanek, Aot, Velara King Karastvats, Velhareni Yepi, Artsakhaucian Hamar, Mel Salmaneri Hansasanucian Hamar, Yemel Jotim Yasnakanucian Hamar. Ankach Nelanit, Ashkari Port Zayum and Penketum, Yura Kanchulas Zimboreng, Yevas Kenat and Mahu Pai Karum, Ulmahum and Melhalinakis Nel and Mai Halinikum. Yura Kanchulitas Oroshaki Arakelusuna Vera Pafats. I saw Mengaistarek. Մենք ուզենայինք լինել հայրենիքում, բայց այստեղ ենք և այստեղ մեր գործը պիտի կատարենք։ Եվ այս պահին ես պիտի հրավիրեն յուրականչուրին միանալ մեզ աղոտքով, հնձրենք աստուց, որ գոտը պնդի մեզ, ուշտա մ Իդի խնդրեի բոլորը ոտքի կանգնեք, այլ մերով սկսենք թել առանությունք։ Ոտնյատ է մեր ուս Հիստոս ամեն։ Այլ մեր որ է կինիսես, զուրկ էրեցյան ունքով, երեկ է սերակայությունքով, երեկիսին կանգ Եվ թողում ես պատվիս մեր, որ պես եմ մենք թողում մերոր սվարտապանած, եվ մի կանիս մեզի փորձություն, այլ պրկյած մեզի չալը, զիկրոյ արկայություն և զորդում եվ պահավ կամիկյանիս ամեն։ Եվ եվ սխանությանս Այժում եվ մի իշտ եվ ալկյանը սատիկանից ամեն։ Oh, 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 oh,
Alleluia, Hastatunkatsek, <Sessizlik> Եվ արեք բրկության սաղավարդն ու հոգու սուսերը, որ է աստու խոսկը, ամենայն աղորդներով և աղաջանքներով ամեն ժամ աղորդեցեք հոգով և այդ բանի մեջ հսկեցեք անխոնջ հարատեղության և աղաջանքներով բոլոր սվպերի համար Alleluia! Achtal Turak Yevitin Zentatsen Arachinora, Yerzvachatsen Harutian Yurian. Alleluia! Zorabot, 
Just to follow on from my introduction, this is the time to give now. This is time to be practical. As I speak, we have young members of our church who are contacting members of our community to raise funds to take the payments. Um, this will be the, the tr they will be contacting you. So if you know if they do contact you, don't think that something's wrong with this. They are actively working from today, contacting members of the community to help and facilitate the collection. Is Kajan Kuzenayev Rabiyev Sevan Habibi or Ms. Modenayev Ures Maidi? I'm going to invite Sevan Habib over, please, to sing a sacred hymn, Where Art Thou Mother? And if I can please ask you, in line with health and safety, we're unable to light candles, so if I can ask you, please, to take out your mobiles on silent and to use that wonderful button in lieu of candles, please. Content is on this mobile network tonic in my spot. Ye Brusere Octvedo, Momi Poparen, Lusabore, who is my struggle.
Thank you very much, Sivan. Thank you. I mean, as you listen to the words of the songs, as I was listening, I was thinking, what do we pass on? What makes us come together as a family, always, throughout our history and now? Our values of family, our values of hospitality, of unconditional love, of coming together at times of difficulty. Uh, the, you know, these are the songs, Skili Gia, Marabakti, you know, you might not speak the language, but you know these songs, you recognize them. This is what brings us together as a family. This is what we have witnessed over the last two weeks, regardless of where you live. Hayastan, Diaspora, Artsakh, family, family. Please give generously, please, please, because we have to be, I mean, we might not have a chance again, I need to reiterate that, but we have to be practical, and this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. And as Sir Pazan Hayer said earlier, uh, quoting the Arabasi ladies' <laughs> uh, method of collecting money and donating, every penny counts, and every, every donation counts. Every, uh, and you know, sometimes you can't donate in money, that's fine, but you can donate in kindness and gesture and support. So supporting one another is also very important. I mean, we're all devastated, we're all, you don't have to necessarily have your immediate family taking part in this reality to, to be devastated. So please come together now, now is the time. Sivirinev, I saw all of us Zimborek. Zenko, Kirichov, Hamagakichov, Teramov, Mobilov, Medpolo, Hanara Borutunerov, Yevzarayutyam. I saw Polaris Zimborek, High Zimborek, Vordev Tatsial, Estipazek, Gyank Bashpanelu, Gyank Abavelu, Yev Gyank. Gerdelu Tarsia Mer Hagaragorta Gusti Bemers Vorbesi Menk Gyank Bahek Yev Gyank Gerdek I saw Polores Askovin Arachaki Tibranek Nuinis Kete I saw Londonum Get out, I see you at the metro of London, abroad. Nae Polores Arachaki Zibrae, Eng Darbev, Hankamak Nerovier Severo. Yevichveski Deng, Yepov Arachaki Zibraes. Ampoch Ushatrutunat, Ampoch Ujet, Ampoch Vokit, Midgat Vokit. Get Ronatsade, make the Badagibra. Get Ronatsade, Hachtana Gibra. Ye make I saw Polores, Askovin, Arachaki Zibra, and ye get Ronatsade, Eit Hachtana Gibra. I saw Polores Samad, Serpazan Bahe, Vorobedev, Vorbes Hai. Vorbes Matkutian, Batkutian, Mech, Amena Hin, Joobutneren, Norakuin Serutnere, Jaran Kortnere, Meng Tarsial, Genats Mahu, Archevek. Vorbes Arhavik, Desat, Yev, Shatma, Arhavik Neren, and Snob Joobut, Meng Kideng, Inchpes, Vochinchen, Nor Gyang, Sterzel, Kideng Inchpes, Mohirneren, Dun Shinel, Dun Tabrot, Yegeretzi Garutel, Havakagan, Gyang, Veragangnel, Yev Hatkabes, Sterzel. I saw Ampok Hayutuna, Mia Vorvaze, Avelikan Yerpek. Make camp, make seed, make hockey, ye make prunsk. I saw 
Garevore, or Menki Dakting, Vor Irok Haftagan Shogurten, Chenayats, Mer Batmutian and Tatskin, Amena Havor Termaknevi. Askain, Mer Yankin Mech, I saw it's natural. Amena Luch, Yev Voroshatrich, Bat. You are countries, Gochwazen Dalu, Yev. Navira Kevelu, Yura countries, Yanki, Amena Tanga, Amena Garevor, Amena Sidelin, Yev Amena Harazada, Mer Hirenikin, Hayastani, Yev Arzakin, Arzakin Mer Herosagan, Jogoburti, Anot Yanki, Abahogutian, U Koyaderman, Hamar, Hereva Par Sidelinet, Yura countries, Mer Polor Narabolutunera, Mer Eutuna, Ikor Stanelov, Ahabasik, Ais Voroshatrich Bahin, Gochvadzenk, Dalu, Navira Perelu, Ein Inchwort, Mer Serti Harazade, Ein Inchwort Betke, Vorovedev, Vechnagan Haftanaga, Merne, Meraskine, Yev Arzachin. Is Ajma Amsnegwing Fila for the Lava Papa? We're going to now want to follow up. As of this moment, I'm an international fugitive. By filming this scene on this patch of dirt, I'll be joining the ranks of hundreds of journalists and politicians who just wanted to come and witness a world between masters, a war zone. And if I said I was a tourist and that I was confused and that I completely agree to Azerbaijan's natural right to this land, they might just let me get away with it. I might slip under the radar, but I'm not going to do that. So for the rest of my life, a dictatorship with a litany of human rights abuses is going to be waiting to throw me in prison. Because that's what it takes to tell this story. And if that's what they'll do to me, imagine what it's like living here. What gives you the right to live where you are? To sell your land, to grow your crops, to raise your children in a place that you think is yours. What gives you that right? It might sound like a complicated answer, but it's actually quite simple. It's force. Guns. Every law we've ever made, every agreement we've ever come to, every nation carved out of the dust, it's all guns. Might makes right. No matter how peaceful your nation may be, the only reason you're there is because of guns. The people of Karabakh understand a world where force can take away everything in an instant. They're indigenous to this region and have likely lived here for over 10,000 years. This area of the Caucasus is so closely associated with their inhabitation that it's deemed Greater Armenia in almost every language on Earth. Whether you call it Ararat, Urarti, Ermanin, Mini, Armenia, or Hike, they've been here so long that the Old Testament treats them as ancient. Armenians fought Babylon. They fought Pompey Magnus and Alexander of Macedon. They fought Genghis Khan, Tamerlan, and the Mamluks. They trembled before the Ottomans and Stalinist Russia. Their entire history is a history of dying so that other people can live. And within that world of war, the region of Karabakh is the only place where they've never been completely forced from their land. While elsewhere in the region that bears their name, exile and genocide have driven them from their ancestral homes, in the Karabakh, they've never truly left. The people here call themselves donkeys because they're so stubborn. Nobody tells them what to do, not even Mother Armenia. The EU doesn't recognize them as a nation. Russia doesn't recognize them as a nation. The US doesn't recognize them as a nation but they're still here. And if you want to remove them, you're going to need some serious guns. Unfortunately, Azerbaijan has those guns, and they're not afraid to use them. Because they too think this land is theirs, and they've spent more money than Armenia could ever dream of to convince the governments of the world that they're right. To understand how it got to this point though, let's go back a bit in history. Although this story goes back thousands of years and this region has seen independence and destruction on loop a dozen times or more, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to focus on the last few generations alone. 
At the outset of World War I and the Russian Revolution, Armenians faced a historically difficult situation. To the east, a Turkish nationalist uprising had started a slaughter of minorities so brutal it led to the creation of the word genocide. To the south, a collapsed Persian Empire that had once served as a protector of the Armenian people was crushed by the weight of its own internal divisions. And to the north, the Russian Revolution was in full swing, replacing the dictatorial Tsar with a dictatorial Soviet. In the middle of this were a people with a little identity to call their own. They'd spent so long in other empires split between rulers that they barely saw themselves as a people. The genocide changed that. Depending on who you believe, Ottomans killed between 30 and 70 percent of all Armenians. And yet, even with those numbers, people from just a few hundred miles away would have been completely unaware it was even happening. It remains one of the most denied atrocities in history. Turkey is so opposed to it becoming internationally recognized that they even murdered one of their own journalists for suggesting reconciliation. In 2007, no less. But as awful as it was, it hardened those who survived it. The Armenians have a saying, we fight ourselves until the knife touches the bone, then we unite. And in the face of mass ethnic cleansing, a people separated by borders, language, and history began to once again see themselves as united. The knife was touching the bone. And out of this garden watered with blood, a hero arose. Gerigen Nejda is perhaps the most important man in modern Armenian history. He was the nationalist spark that lit the fire of independence. His writings, actions, and political will aimed to stave off the complete collapse of his people and to create a state to call their own. It would be no exaggeration to say that his writings changed the world. Hundreds of thousands of Armenians who'd imagined themselves as nothing more than Soviets woke up to their identity. For Armenians in Moscow, Baku, Turkey, America, Argentina, and everywhere else they'd been exiled, his words rang out like a bell. Come together, defend your people, fight until you're free. And for the briefest few months in 1921, he'd run an independent republic here in the hills. But as strong as Nezde was, he couldn't change the world. A few thousand civilian soldiers cannot stop a superpower, no matter how zealous they are. But that didn't mean he ran. This wasn't a politician in exile telling his boys back home to die for his cause. He was leading from the front lines, and he would fight anyone who took away his idea of independence. He fought the Turks with the Tsar, and he fought the Soviets with Hitler. It didn't matter who his allies were, so long as they said when the dust settled, his people would have a homeland. But promises are nothing without the guns to back them up, and no foreign nation was willing to spill their blood for the Karabakh. For the next decade, change came rapidly to the Caucasus, setting the basis for a conflict that rages right up to the modern day. As the Russian Revolution pulled back the armies of the Tsar, age-old ethnic clashes began to crop up in eastern Armenia and Azerbaijan. British oil interests had long since led them to ally with the Azeri, and war politics were nothing if not harsh. The British designated Karabakh a disputed territory and agreed to look the other way if the Azerbaijani felt they wanted to make it theirs. In turn, they expected them to hold back the oncoming Soviets when the time came. It was nearly 95% Armenian. But it wasn't as simple as a British decree. The World War may have ended, but here, war was only beginning. In the face of an ongoing genocide in the West, Nejde and his local donkeys disagreed wholesale to the loss of their historic homeland in the East. They were ready to fight to the death, and the British and Azerbaijani would make them live up to their word. In 1920, the Karabakh capital of Shusha, then one of the most prosperous towns in the entire Transcaucasus, was razed to the ground, its entire population raped and murdered on the spot. Within all this turmoil, Soviets with the backing of an up-and-coming Joseph Stalin began eyeing the old empire of the Tsar and sent the Red Army down through the Caucasus. To gain favor with the Armenians, they promised the return of Karabakh in exchange for support and soldiers. But like most things in communist Russia, what was promised didn't quite meet reality. The new leader of nationalist Turkey, commonly known as Ataturk, had hinted that he might make friends with the isolated Soviet Russian government, and in turn, they felt like they might make a good communist out of him. So in spite of historic ties, a near 100% Armenian population, and the Communist Central Committee having voted the day before to unite it with Armenia, on July 5, 1921, Stalin handed the region of Karabakh to the newly created, heavily Turkic Soviet Azerbaijan. 
It was a decision that surely everyone knew would end in bloodshed. For the next 60 years, the Armenians watched as Azerbaijani settlers came to set up a life in the Karabakh, a land they would soon too call their home. And for 60 years, the Armenians protested, only to be crushed again and again by the unapologetic Red Army. In 1988, as Soviet power was coming to a close, the Armenians began a protest that would rip the scar into an open wound. Pogroms, extrajudicial murder, and open hostility were everywhere. There were no good guys. From eastern Armenia to Azerbaijan, sweeping from Stepanakert down to Baku, ethnic cleansing that had been dormant for generations was brought back to the surface. The Soviets didn't intervene. They waited until it was all said and done. After all, they just wanted to control the government. They didn't really care for the people. Hundreds of thousands of refugees fled to the region most likely to keep them alive. Armenians, Azeri, Yazidi, Tatar, Georgians, Persians, all of them. They made the hard choice. You run or you die. In 1991, as the Soviet Union collapsed around them, the remaining people of Nagorno-Karabakh held a referendum to form an independent state. With the Azeri abstaining, the vote was nearly unanimous. But while the republics of the Soviet Union were in theory allowed to vote themselves into existence, they'd never considered the Karabakh a republic. On paper, it belonged to Azerbaijan. And even though Russia, now worried about an Islamic state, would send troops to fight for the Armenians, they wouldn't recognize their right to Artsakh. Fear of Turkish intervention was so strong that not even Armenia would recognize their fledgling little brother in the east. The republic was deemed illegal, and the Azeri declared war. It was a war that they'd lose. Nearly 30 years after the outset of that war, and the borders remain roughly as they ever were. Multiple years of total blockade, fighting with handmade weapons against jihadist mercenaries from across the Muslim world, and yet they've barely moved an inch. Azerbaijan's military budget is larger than the entire GDP of Artsakh, yet they still can't take this land. The human rights abuses are constant, without end. The Azeri have enlisted the help of men coming back from their time in ISIS, bringing with them the horrible lessons of Syria and Iraq. It's become commonplace for them to carve up the living soldiers they capture, sending back their bodies while posting Facebook photos of their severed heads. They've systematically destroyed cultural artifacts in ancient churches. They know history supports the Armenians, so they destroy the history. They've dropped mines with colorful ribbons attached, meant to be picked up by children, colloquially naming them after kinder surprise eggs. Elderly citizens are being murdered in their homes by special forces. And the Azeri dictatorship is giving medals to those who commit these atrocities. But for all the terror they've caused, it's backfiring. What they can't see is that an animal fights harder the further it's pushed up against the wall. Just ask these donkeys. Today, not a single country on earth recognizes the Republic of Artsakh. The rights of the people of Karabakh simply aren't as important as the geopolitics of superpowers. The UN may say that indigenous people have rights, but to quote Joseph Stalin, how many divisions do they have? Baku has oil, and lots of it. Turkey's in NATO, they're fighting in Syria, and they control the flow of refugees to Europe. Nobody is trading that alliance for a few thousand people in the hills. So, the Republic of Artsakh waits. They bide their time building the trappings of a state. They've built museums and statues. They've built children's playgrounds and universities. They've built a foreign ministry. Because they're waiting for the world to change. And they believe that someday people will see them for what they are. They believe that someday History will matter. But until that day, they're going to be right here, defending what's theirs with a gun. This is Rare Earth. I have to say a few words in English. This evening is coming to the end, but 
our work is not ending. You can write down a group of 10, 15 young people that are sitting in my house and making telephone calls, other people and asking them to support. And they're gathering, using all the possible channels to fundraise and then all will be directed to Harastan of Armenia Fund. And it's public, they will announce, it's very transparent. What they are doing, this is very important. And also here we have some people who will do fundraising, but our community has done a huge job during the last two weeks and each of us is working hard, I know. But community is an organization and we are doing organized work in cooperation and collaboration with our embassy and other institutions. And I would like also to ask the chairperson of the community council, Arnold Abraham, to come to brief the work we are doing as a community here. And if you have questions, a few questions. We can have also Q&A and Q&A this evening. And at the end, I want to start. We will conclude with prayer. Last prayer, we will say. Very short, not long. But uh, the last thing that I want to say, it's in Armenia, half a year. It's in Matazek. I can come to Ayrin Barada. Before I was in Barada, that's Ayrin Barada. It's a Barada in the Barada. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Shelly Harney Kissner, uh, I was a member of the Arten Badawazmi, who was a member of the Mews Organiz. I was a member of the Amen Gorzum, Kazma Gerbshuneri, Miazia, Mahat Marmin, who was a member of the ACEMC. I was a member of the Nakhim Yegiretsi Tragrum, who was a member of the Nishkilufneri Dab, who was a member of the Nakhim Noren Mat Shatete Vasatan, Yerek Himnagam Glufnari Dag, Arachi Bajan, Kendronatsa, Public Relation, Irakan Lureri Tarazum, Tehaman Kum Yete Telain Mamulin, Portsman, Tayak Bahan, Kalkavan Ashatanker, Ispes Kapel, Arkos Naharachan Angio, Ispes Starber and Pinari Head, Kaber Setsev Yete Vasenkin Chansun Darn Mohaisanu. Այդ հիմնական առաջի բաժին նա աշխատանքներին է։ Երկորդ բաժին կենտրոնացած է նորեն մեր կարովարջան միջոցով հայտարվաց հիմնադրամի դրամահավակի աշխատանքով։ Կաջալերում ենք մեր բոլոր հայրենքի մեր ներուշն � որ ոգտագործվելու է վերաշինության և ներկա պայմաներին հայրենքին ոգտագործելու համար։ Իսկ երորդ կլուխը կենտրոնացերը բույքերի, թե բիրիշկական և թե այլ պիտութներ ապահովելու հայրենքի համար նորեն։ Ուրախ եմ հայտարելու ծանցերի միջոցով պոխանցանք համայնքին։ Եվ երեկ ճաշից հետո մեր առաջի պատրասված գույքերի բանը ուղարգով Հայաստան, բավական նշմայելի բան էր, որ ուղարգով մոտ 1300 կիլո կշիրկով 6800 ապրանք հակուստեղ են բրիշկական պի� ինչ-որ կարեք մտացեք է ծանգերով, որ հայ տարվեր էր։ Եվ հույսանք, որ բաղջ այց հետո այսի պետք արդեն հասնի երվան և ընդողում պետք եղաց տեղերում է տիցրվի։ Ես աշխատանք է դեր եվ շարնակվելու անգյո կարավարության պատկապես, որ մենք ստեղ բնակում ենք, փորձենք հասկասենք, որ կարիք ունի միջամտի, կարիք ունի իր ուժը բանասնի թուրկիոն զսպելու համար, կարիք ունենք մենք անգյայի բնակության հասկասենք հայով է Հազրբայ 
բաղկան հսկահաշտական կա և ամեն մեկը ստեղում մեր անելիք ունենք ետ ուջամ։ Նյութական աշխատանքը, նյութական գոյացման աշխատանքը նորեն անչապ կարևորա, այսօր իրիկում հիմնականում ամեն դրամներ է երթալուա Հայաստան ալարմինի ու վանդին, իշպես կարովարջուն բանարը, որ իրենց հայացողության որդը որ պետք է դրամները ծախսվել։ Մա հատ պարզապես հիշեցում գույքերի մասով, թե գուզ բայց անչապ կարևորավոր նյութական ավելի կարևորություն նի գույքերից։ Եթե ձեր կարովորությունների մեջ է նյութականով ոգնեք, խնդրում ենք նյութականով ոգնեք։ Գույքերը եմ պարավային, որ կարող եք տարվեր տեղայիս � կայլի է թիրոտել են հատուկ ծախսերին, որ կարովորությունը հարմարը տեսում ես վարգել։ Բայց խնձրում եմ, եթե ճանանչում եք ընկերություններ, հիմնարգներ, հանութներ, որ կարող են որվ է ձևով այդ ծանկերի սահանների � իպաստ անձյա շապատվա աշխատանքին որվա ընթասկին հիմնականում ոչ չի եգի, կարող ապատայի է ժրամը մենք կրջատենք կարողովա և իրիկ ուներ միայն բաս պահենք, բայց եթե որվ է կարիք ունեք գույքերը Սիրելի հայնակիսներ, իմա մեր ես երեկոն, որ կազմակ է պելենք, խոսկերպ դիասենք, ես պաշտունական մասը ավարդում ենք, ուրեմը ակնչերվ ավարդել եմ, ես ուզեմ շունրակալություն հայտնել անգորոր անձանց, որոնք ողնել � Մեր համանքի պարագային եմ եկերեց ու պարագային մասնալ զապես, կատարում եմ կամաղոմերի ուջով, որոնք ճանք են եմ եմ չեն խնայում, նայն ինչին ժամանակը կրամատում են այս ամեն էր համանելի հիմանությությությությությությությությությությությությու Եվ շատին, որ միշկ մերջիտի տո ծարում են հանդահավում ես կերացը կերպով մեր կարսնդրում, շնուրականը մեր սիրի սրվանի, որ իր երկեցողության ուսալվես մենց մեզում, մխիթարես կերես կասկես մենց մեր ենտ Եվ հատկապես այս է գանում ուպոտ ապատներ ապտիրվացան սանես համար ոպնություն է, որ այս հրա ուկերեցուն են կարող է իսպես հավատվեր, նաև զրուցել են ինացել։ Եվ որոր եվ այստեղ նես էտ էլ միշտ որ լուսապանում է որ ասում էլ ամեն մի քսան, ամեն մի հայ քսան պան ումար է կիտար, ումար է մար է բերցում ու տար համահետության ինդասյանի։ Ես այս բաղաց եք այս տատկյանում է ժամահետությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությու Սանապատիկ է, բայց ինչ ինչ ես ես որիք նայստել, որ միշտ ուսապանումը եվ են տարը տպոշեցյան, որ պատրաստնում ունդերը, այստը վարկում է կա հասատյան, 
Ինչ է բրում, 